Hey guys, welcome to Welker Farms. This is part three of the international restoration. We've got a lot to do, a lot to do. Uh, what are some of the things? Uh, we gotta finish out the brakes and wheel seals and uh, put the drive line on. It's kind of go along as we go and turbo, see, turbo, torque arms. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff to do. So hopefully, if we can do all this, we'll have the truck running at the end because we have only fired it up once so far. That was real quick outside. This will be the second attempt to start it. And hopefully from here on out, it'll be good to go. So anyways, guys, let's get to it. We'll get going. Hang tight. Leg arm's got the wheel seal in. Got the bearings tight. He's just now putting the axle shaft in. Almost one down. Three to go. back axle is pretty much done except for airbags and shock absorbers but the new wheel seals are in and oils in the axle and new brake shoes now for the next axle we're gonna leave only one dual on each side out like this just so we can get around everything and especially when we go take it to go get worked on and painted we'll put the rest of the duels on when it's finished up All the wheel seals and brake shoes are in. Now to put the wheels in this axle and we're done for that. So we get a few more parts. Yeah. Yep. Then we can finish it. While leg arms and I have been working on that truck, see what my dad's been doing? That's looking pretty good, isn't it? Nice. But now the fun begins. I gotta take this nice little gasket kit here and put six of these guys in the exhaust manifold, which is right over here. But look at this thing. Ooh. All right, let's go get some tools for this. I got off the front half of the manifold. I've been able to break these bolts pretty easily, except for this one, and it's right behind the turbo. I tried taking the turbo off, but I uh, sheared one of the bolts on the turbo. So I probably should have heated it, took it off differently. I'm gonna leave this here. My goal is to hopefully get this off one piece so I can deal with this on the bench. This one's being a pain, but I think I'll get it. Well guys, after pulling the turbo off, not really with our plan, but I think we're gonna have to replace it. If you look closely right here, you can see the veins on this turbo. There's a big chip taken off right there, and there's a bunch of gouges. That's not good. That means that impeller is off balance, which could cause it to explode. Uh, usually what happens is dirt gets through the intake somehow, and it hits this impeller turning at upwards of 100,000 RPM, and when it hits that, it can chew it up, but I don't think that's what's wrong here. What's wrong is this housing was loose. I didn't loosen that, that's the way it was. Found that out afterwards. So this housing was able to just shift a little bit, which caused it to catch on the edge of this aluminum here, and that caused it to break off. Unfortunately, we need a new turbo. So we're gonna get one ordered, probably just a stock turbo. Get some looking, looks like a high performance turbo really wouldn't do much good for us, unless we tune the engine up, and we're not gonna tune the engine up because it's a lot of coin. And then another thing we had to do, well, these rubber bushings here, as you can see, are uh, toast. I got new ones. 
Just put the first one in, got to bolt it up, line it to where it was before, then I got the other axle to do. But it's gonna look nice. All the shock absorbers are on, so I gotta unhook the cylinder on the fifth wheel plate and put a come along on it and try to slide that thing back so I get access to put this in. It's always something. And, uh, but now you can see I got access to that so I can take it off, finally. Let's take a look at what leg arms have been up to. Oh, look at that. Shippers in the floor. Ooh, isn't that nice? Good job, leg arms. Pulling that turbo off. I broke one stud off. Leg arms broke the other stud off, but two of them did stay in. So now we gotta get a welder and he's gonna weld nuts to these. And we're gonna see if we can heat it enough to get it to break loose the threads and back those out and save this piece. Cause I'm sure that's expensive. This one here, and all of these. But, check that out. Manifold's on, it's gotta finish tighten them up. We're gonna take the tanks off now. Well, I'll make cleaning those tanks a little easier. Now, this is different. Hi, Rousey. Hi. We get the rug. Really? No. It just kept snowing. Got a lot more than we were supposed to. So that's good, we need the moisture. Kind of a bummer to see that nice weather go, but. Oh well, we're in the shop, right? So uh, we got heat, we'll stay in there, that's nice. Great time to call. <laughs> Nick. What in the world? This transmission's longer. No? This had a nine speed in it. Go sit this down. Well, how does that work? Unless that old transmission that was in here was... A 9 speed. Well, I know it had to have been a, a 13. Well, as you guys just saw, this driveline did not fit in there. We uh, put it up there and to our surprise, it's too long. Which can only mean two things. One, that had a 9 speed transmission in that truck. And this was a longer driveline for that purpose. Or two, this is the wrong driveline. The truck says 13 speed up on the corner above the door. It clearly had a third speed, 13 speed in it. That means that this driveline is not the original driveline that came with that truck. So the previous owners of that truck that robbed the 13 speed out of it also used the 13 speed driveline that was connected with it and put their old longer driveline that was to attach the nine speed in the truck. Not a big deal. It just means uh, leg arms is gonna cut this thing down. So he's gonna go ahead and chop it, cut it to length, re-weld it, and we'll just put it back in there. But it just also means a few more hours of work for him. So poor guy keeps working but we don't want them sitting around either, so it's good, I guess. We found out that uh, we gotta cut the drive line. I don't have a centering tool to clamp down on it and to keep that centered like this. Well, this isn't big enough for that drive line. I'm doing the poor man method. Get it blocked up, you cut it out until you get about the right height, and then you can spin the drive line. Don't worry, I've been successful doing a couple of these like this. 
Take a grinder. So. Uh, not the greatest weld, but it'll hold. When you do drive lines, you gotta make sure that there's a straight line between the center point of the universal joint to the center point. So what I did is I made a mark on the drive line and I made a mark here and I actually ground a little bit there and round there. So then when I put it back together, I have it perfectly lined up. If that is off just by a little bit, what will happen is it'll create a vibration in the drive line and you'll just tear up your universal joints and won't be very good. There we go. Drive line is officially on. It's filter time. Say we got one. Better match. Let's put it on. Okay, guys, turbo's in. The makeshift bucket fuel tank that leg arms rigged up here is good to go. Battery's in on the other side. We're gonna try firing it for the first time. There's no mufflers on it. So it's basically dual exhausting out the sides right here. That's gonna be kind of interesting to see how that sounds. As far as we know, oil, coolant, everything is in it. Should be good to go. So uh, let's try firing up, see what happens. There we go, we fired it up. Thanks for watching guys, it's been a pleasure. We'll have a lot more to do this in part four, so hang tight for that one, hopefully next week sometime. That could be in the paint booth, we'll find out for sure. But anyways, make sure you like, subscribe to the channel, like the video, watch the other ones, part one and part two, if you guys are interested in what's going on here to this international. God bless, take care, and have a good week.